it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we're at the Centurion Lounge at LaGuardia. Let's go check it out. The lounge is on the third floor, and once you get out of the elevator, you turn left and you go to the check-in desk. After checking in, you basically have two choices. Either you go forwards towards the work area, or you turn right. So the work area is basically just a bunch of desks, there's a printer there, it's kind of more of a quiet area. If you turn right and you keep walking forwards, so there's a bunch of different seating areas, and eventually you'll get to the bar and the food. Once you turn right, there's a bunch of seating and there's also TVs, so pretty quiet area. Most people are just kind of having conversations and also watching TV. And once you turn left from here, this is kind of the rowdier area. So there's the bar, and there's food on the left side. And there's also coffee and everything else you would expect. So they have fried chicken, which is actually pretty good. Here's the coffee maker. Here's the fried chicken. Ooh. More food options. There's a few missing right now. Salad. So pretty full stacked salad bar. And a dessert. And more dessert. Here's my plate, and it's mostly chicken. And the chicken is amazing. I just took a bite. Here is Mandy's plate, which is a bit healthier compared to my plate. The chicken's really good and I would strongly recommend it and I'm gonna go try to get some more before they run out. Here's another view of the spread and they actually ran out of the chicken so they're bringing more out right now. But it's really amazing, it's kind of unique, it's kind of sweet. So I'd strongly recommend it if you do come to this lounge. And yeah, so still need to try this soup out and this is what I'm talking about. The restroom in this location is relatively small, but I think that's fine because the lounge itself isn't too big, it's more intimate. And there are two stalls, one big one and one little one, and that's about it. Another thing to kind of consider too is that there is no shower here. So if you did want to shower after your flight or before taking a flight, then this is probably not the best one for that. Round two, pretty much more fried chicken, some carrots, and some juice. And this is what traffic looks like to get to the hotel. So we're kind of just waiting around until it dies down a bit more. I'd rather enjoy chicken than traffic. Terrible picture, but this tastes amazing. Here's the drink menu and a lot of different choices. And again, all of this is free as long as you can come in. If you are a platinum member or up, then you can come in here for free. If you are anything below platinum, then you still can come in here, but you have to pay to come in per person. So depending on how much you're drinking or how much you're eating, it might not make sense. So you kind of have to do the math. So really funny story, but Mandy just got carded for alcohol. So that's kind of the first time that's ever happened at any of the MX lounges. So kind of hilarious, but yeah, she was carded for wine. So this is the bar, a lot of different options and a pretty cool looking bar. I ended up getting a blue door. We spend most of the time eating and drinking, let's go check out the rest of the lounge. And for me, the American Express Platinum card is pretty worthwhile just because I can do this for free. I travel pretty frequently, probably once every one or two months, domestically at least, and maybe once or twice every year internationally, so the fact that I can go out of one of these lounges or land in one of them makes a lot of sense for me at least, given that I'm out of SFO. So again, here's the entrance, and let's go loop towards the business area and try to be a bit more quiet. So a few nooks here, so a ton of people working here. There's two workstations and more desks are working and cool decorations and artwork. So a lot of seating over here, a bit more quiet. So again, most people are just working. There's also a printer in case you need to print a boarding pass or print anything else. Here is some more coffee and cookies as well. And yeah, they get their own pretty private view. So it's a bit nicer and calmer on this side some oranges. The artwork for me is always just really cool with Amex. This side just really emptied out for whatever reason, so I want to give you guys another show of it and to see what is here. So again, the artwork is pretty cool. And I think this is actually my favorite Centurion Lounge, so SFO is not too bad at all. It's a bit bigger than this one, but the food is not as good. Vegas is the biggest one of the three I've been to, but the food is really subpar. Here's Mandy, and I'm gonna go grab another coffee before we head out. But yeah, this is probably one of my favorite lounges because of the wide open windows. 
The fact that you get a view of the runway is just very nice compared to the SFO one, which is a lot darker because it's inside the middle of the area. You don't really have a view of anything other than the concourse itself. A lot of people ask me about the difference between the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the American Express Platinum card. And for me, it's really the lounge access. So if you are a frequent traveler, even if you travel once every one or two months, this is a huge difference. Priority Pass lounges pretty much suck domestically, and even internationally, they're kind of getting a bit worse because of the volume of people. So the Amex one is just a great experience. Bye, Centurion Lounge. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this lounge? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about or this lounge in particular, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. Otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.